morning, friends. Hearty welcome to the next edition of the VDMA CEO's Thought Leadership Series. And a pleasure for me today to welcome Dr. Girish Rao, CEO and MD of Arting India Private Limited. He has been the MD since uh, 2012. So friends, before joining uh, Harting, uh, Dr. Girish Rao was working as Director of Aerospace, Defense and Marine Business Units of TE Connectivity, earlier known as Tyco Electronics. Before TE, Dr. Girish Rao worked with French multinational Schneider Electric for 10 years. He's a graduate in electrical engineering. He also holds MBA and PhD in marketing management. So a pleasure to have you with us uh, today, Dr. Girish Rao. And thank you for joining us for this interaction at the VDMA CEO's Thought Leadership Series. My pleasure. Good morning to you, Rajesh ji. And uh, uh, I'm really honored uh, to be on uh, the same platform as, you know, our distinguished uh, speaker and uh, and uh, as a video MD, you know, on the same uh, platform. Thank you very much for inviting me. Our pleasure. Dr. Girishka. Um, Girishi, let's come a little bit to the uh, relationship uh, between the employees and management. Now, they say listening is a key to effective working relationship among employees and between management and staff. A mm -hmm. critical element uh, in retaining good employees and creating a positive workplace is to provide employees with a sense of ownership. Now, at Harting, if you could explain to us, Girishi, how is this being practiced at RT? All right. So if you uh, have seen my visiting card or uh, any of our uh, Harting uh, brochures or logo, it's it says that Harting uh, uh, people, power and partnership. So the people are, you know, prime movers in uh, uh, Harting and uh, we focus uh, a lot on our employees and uh, as you know that uh, last year at the start of pandemic uh, there was a sudden closure of business and uh, something which was not really anticipated but uh, uh, since we had a very good IT backbone in our company so we were able to ensure that everybody is well connected and uh, when this uh, actually the close down happened uh, we ensured that uh, we are very well connected with our, um, our employees. We gave them a lot of assurance that, you know, nobody will happen to you. Nobody will be uh, fired from the company and uh, your job is 100% secured. And uh, at the same time, uh, we were, you know, uh, doing the testing of uh, this uh, rapid antigen. And uh, th those days, sorry, uh, this rapid antigen was not there. We were doing this RT-PCR testing of all of our uh, employees. We also ensured that uh, everybody in our company is vaccinated. This was fully sponsored by Harting India. We not only ensured uh, our employees, but their family members are also vaccinated. So that this uh, gave a, a lot of uh, uh, kind of you know assurance and uh, you know uh, safety to our employees, and uh, they were pretty happy about this initiative. At the same time. Uh, since uh, we were you know working uh, remotely most of the time so we organized a lot of basic training programs for our colleagues we also invited uh, some external uh, uh, trainers also who you know uh, did some training on stress management and uh, various aspect of life and uh, you know how to live in a tough situation and stuff like that I also invited uh, a submariner uh, from Indian Navy, you know, and uh, he explained, you know, how it feels like working inside a submarine, you know, for three months together. So the message was, you know, OK, you are all holed up in your home, but, uh, you know, think about the submarine people, you know, how they spend, you know, three or four months inside the water. So so he explained it very nicely. And uh, so everybody started looking at the positive aspect of life. So we ensured that people are not really stressed about this pandemic situation. So number one was uh, giving them uh, safety, security, and also, you know, train their mind, you know, how to cope up with the situation. So with this background, everybody was happy when office was opened up. Uh, they were really happy to get back into our office. And uh, and uh, so everybody is giving, you know, more than 100% this year, and it, it reflects in our result also. Apart from this, what we do in Harting India is uh, we conduct uh, employee satisfaction survey every year. This is uh, what we have been doing since many, many years. 
and we try to you know do this uh, kind of uh, independent survey and uh, they don't have to mention their names and uh, it's kind of fully anonymous uh, survey and uh, we look at uh, the results and the results are shared with headquarters and uh, but uh, our employees uh, since you know they are they really love what they do here so our scores are always consistently high you know in uh, this employee satisfaction survey on an average we score 80 out of 100 so then there are some areas you know where uh, they have some issues so we try to you know address those issues and uh, recently uh, we applied for this uh, great place to work and uh, we were a little bit skeptical in the beginning because again you know it's a third party agency conducting uh, some kind of you know survey independently on our employees and uh, we were a little skeptical oh we don't know what kind of feedback our employees are going, going to give to an external company but uh, then i'm pleased to inform you that uh, we uh, are today a 100% uh, certified uh, great place to work company so we just got uh, two weeks back only our uh, satisfaction and uh, so this uh, shows that our employees are uh, pretty happy they are motivated because you know there were uh, five dimensions actually of uh, this uh, great place to work uh, uh, survey on our uh, employee our employees one was uh, the credibility of management second was fairness of uh, workplace third was pride and passion in their job, sense of belonging to the company, and uh, this and uh, so our score was pretty high actually. On an average, we scored 84 on each of these uh, five dimensions actually. So this shows that we are on right uh, path, and uh, employees are pretty much you know uh, very very proud of working in Harting India. Oh, compliments, uh, Girishi. I think this really speaks volumes for the job satisfaction that the employees uh, enjoy at Harting India. So compliments to you and the management for creating such a good atmosphere for the employees also, uh, Girishi. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Thank you, sir. Girishi, you spoke about uh, digitization and uh, efforts of Harting. So we know Harting is pushing for digitization in integrated industry. Uh, can you tell us a little more what Harting is doing uh, to increase level of digitization in India, uh, Girishi. Okay. Uh, a few years back, uh, our management uh, has started asking a serious question to all of the managing directors. Are you a digital leader? So this is something, you know, we started, we started questioning ourselves. Are we a new age digital leader? So this was, uh, this was a kind of initiative. We started somewhere in 2000. Uh, 15 in the company and since then uh, we have come a uh, long way. So uh, today we are working on complete digital transformation of our company, not only factory, because since we are a German company, so it is taken for granted that uh, the factories will be fully automated and uh, it will adopt to industry 4.0 standards. That is uh, something else actually. We wanted our people also to operate in a complete uh, digital environment. And uh, so uh, we are offering all our uh, business solutions uh, in a digital way. For example, uh, uh, we also offer uh, today a product configurator uh, to all our customer online on our website. And uh, all customer has to do is register with us and uh, uh, we will give him a login. He can today uh, customize uh, his own uh, product actually by visiting our uh, website and uh, he can, you know, attach various elements into our uh, connectors and uh, then you know he can uh, create his own uh, customized solution and then he can transport these drawings to his uh, uh, his uh, engineering drawings and not only do that uh, he can create his own part number and then he can uh, place order you know with this uh, uh, specific part number so we are offering this kind of digital services uh, to our customer customers are very happy that you know we are offering this kind of service because they don't have to open any catalog and they can configure it, uh, everything they can see the uh, digital twin and stuff like that so we have all kind of step file and cat file everything uh, is available online for customer whoever is uh, getting into our website then our distribution business and uh, order uh, processing processes, order processing uh, 
uh, things are also completely digital and uh, today we have uh, you know people coming into our website and placing orders directly and uh, then it goes directly to our factories and uh, without any human intervention so this is the kind of digital service uh, uh, we are offering and uh, so in short yes uh, we are converting our entire sales process uh, manufacturing process into a uh, digital way so you are quite uh, upbeat about the digitization happening uh, for Harting in India, Girishi. Yes. Yes. Um, Girishi, you also Harting also has application in the e-mobility, electric mobility industry. Now, if yes. you look at the Indian industry, uh, 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 Girishi. So I think uh, now it is less than one percent of the total vehicle sales. But it has the potential to grow up to 5% in a few years. Now, there are about 5 lakh electric two wheelers and few thousand electric cars on Indian roads. Now, going ahead, uh, Girishi, how do you perceive the impact of e mobility in India? And maybe for the benefit of our viewers, you could also mention what is the offerings of Harting in this field of e mobility? Uh... Rajesh, you are forgetting uh, two most important elements uh, in uh, electric vehicle today in uh, Indian market. Uh, I don't know if you have seen the electric uh, three wheelers. Actually, you will be surprised to know that uh, there are more than 50,000 electric three wheelers on the road. Also, there are buses actually plying in uh, many cities uh, which are uh, uh, which are using uh, a complete you know electric uh, traction system actually in, instead of uh, internal combustion engine. So. I've been to Ahmedabad the last month and I was uh, surprised to see, you know, the number of electric uh, buses flying in uh, Ahmedabad actually, and uh, they have taken lead uh, in a big way to convert most of these uh, city buses into uh, electric buses. So then I see a lot of three wheelers uh, in Chennai itself, you know, I see most of these uh, corporation, uh, you know, the garbage uh, collection, uh, three wheelers, they are converted into a complete electric and they look very nice finish is very very good and uh, today each and every three wheeler company whether it is uh, Bajaj or whether it is Ape or whether uh, it is Crompton everybody is uh, making e-auto rickshaw actually and uh, this uh, market is really booming actually but again uh, the ecosystem for uh, these three wheelers are totally different and they use a very a cheap uh, type of uh, charging uh, technique and uh, I don't know how far it will be successful. If you visit uh, Delhi or UP or uh, the rural part of Calcutta, you see a different kind of uh, electric uh, rickshaws actually and uh, these rickshaws are uh, using a kind of battery swapping uh, technology. So, you know, you just replace the battery from a charging station and uh, then you, you know, keep on uh, moving. And uh, as far as uh, uh, two wheeler and uh, four wheelers are concerned, uh, you must have heard about the spectacular success of uh, Ola. Actually, in two days, uh, they have sold 1100 crore worth of two wheelers actually when the window was opened uh, for uh, booking. So, yes, so the two wheeler market is very, very attractive, and uh, the car market is little slow actually. and. Uh, uh, to develop, uh, especially on electric side, uh, because there are reasons actually. And uh, uh, last week, uh, I happened to travel in uh, uh, electric taxi actually, which, which was, uh, I will not uh, name the brand of uh, this taxi. And I just uh, asked the driver, are you happy about this uh, electric uh, uh, taxi, you know, it must be very convenient because uh, you are not using, uh, you don't have to stand in queue for CNG or uh, for uh, uh, diesel or petrol. But what he explained me was, uh, I was really surprised. He mentioned that, uh, sir, actually it's a, it is killing my business. Uh, the range is hardly 150 kilometer and if I'm starting from airport and uh, I'm going to some 70 kilometer uh, away from airport, uh, then I'm always scared, you know, whether I'll run out uh, of this uh, electric charge in battery. So then I have to search for uh, 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 this uh, charging station. 
and uh, it also kills uh, seven to eight hours of my business hours in charging also. So this is a kind of you know problem I'm facing. So uh, I'm planning to get rid of this uh, taxi and uh, then uh, I'm planning to go back uh, to internal combustion engine vehicle because uh, you know I have to go to a petrol station and uh, fill it and uh, it takes hardly 10 minutes whereas the charging takes minimum two hours. So I'm wasting my time and it is affecting my earnings also. So this is a problem uh, I'm facing. So yeah, so the market is evolving in my opinion and uh, I can understand that uh, things are changing. The two wheelers, the Olas and TVS and Bajaj, everybody is uh, focusing on uh, electric uh, two wheelers. So yes, Harting is also focusing on uh, these customers and uh, uh, globally, we are very successful actually with uh, car manufacturers like Volkswagen or uh, other uh, German groups. Uh, so Volkswagen has placed a uh, five years uh, rate contract uh, worth of orders on uh, Arting, so we don't have to look anywhere else uh, but just to supply to Volkswagen uh, in uh, their German plant for all their electric uh, cars. But in India, things are different. Uh, now what I see is hundreds of people are entering into this uh, e-mobility and uh, so many Chinese uh, companies are here right now. Most of the solutions are coming from China. And uh, yeah, charging infrastructure is also a problem. For example, if you buy a two-wheeler or, or a car, I've heard that you know the society where they live in or the apartment where they live in, the apartment owners association or the society is not allowing them to install their, install their own AC charger, actually wall-mounted AC chargers because uh, Probably in an apartment uh, of uh, where you know hundred apartments are there, just one guy want has bought an electric uh, car or two wheeler. So we see a problem on on infrastructure side. But again, uh, you know, since uh, you mentioned that it is five percent uh, uh, of the overall market, so we expect that uh, it will uh, rapidly grow. And uh, Harting is also focusing so on this market. So. As of now, we are focusing on all the three market of two wheeler, uh, four wheeler and uh, the bus especially and uh, three wheelers. Uh, we have decided uh, not to do anything because uh, that is not our uh, level playing field uh, with our kind of uh, premium portfolio of products. So so we are talking to some of the, the companies, OEMs and uh, bus manufacturers and uh, we are uh, Still, you know, discussing uh, with our headquarter uh, what kind of uh, solution uh, to bring in. So we have done our due diligence and we have shortlisted what kind of products and technology we have to bring in. So we'll be bringing out uh, our uh, uh, type one, type two and uh, and uh, char demo kind of uh, chargers. So we are also still uh, debating whether we should produce them in India or uh, we should bring it from Germany or uh, what we should do. So, so about the manufacturing part, we haven't taken any decision, but this is an open topic uh, right now in Harting. Most likely by uh, end of December, December we will uh, take uh, a call on this. Right, right. So that is quite positive to know, uh, Girishi, the offerings of Harting in the e-mobility market. And also, uh, you'll be happy to know as VDMA, we are also planning a seminar in the month of November, in fact, on e mobility with our members together. So our aim is also to promote uh, the offerings of the German companies in the e-mobility market. And um, we would be happy to have Harting also join us for this uh, seminars, what we are planning, uh, in fact, in November. Yeah. That's uh, nice to know, actually. We would love to be part of this uh, initiative. Right, right. Also, Girishi, I see behind on your background, you have the uh, the windmill and your offerings in the wind energy. So uh, let me come to a question regarding the uh, wind energy. Now, uh, so of course, the renewable energy, Girishi, now we know for sustainable growth, renewable energy is very important. And the government has, in fact, targeted 140 gigawatt of wind uh, by 2030 which means that between now and 2030, that is in 10 years time, we need to commission, install and commission approximately 10.3 gigawatts uh, per year. Now, in your opinion, Girishi, is this uh, feasible, possible, achievable in India? 
And uh, going ahead, how do you foresee the energy mix changing in India? Uh, from my opinion, uh, this uh, target uh, is very much uh, achievable. But if you would have, if you would have asked me this question three years back, uh, then uh, I would have said no. Now today, why I'm saying that uh, it is achievable, achievable, achievable uh, because of uh, two main reasons. One number one is uh, the turbine manufacturers. Uh, are upgrading their turbines to higher capacity. For example, a few years back, uh, people were, uh, the market leader in India was uh, selling 800 kilowatt, 900 kilowatt machine. Then some people started uh, bringing 1.2, 1.3 megawatt turbine. And today people are talking about uh, 2.4, uh, 2.6 megawatt turbine. Then there are uh, people, OEMs, who are talking about five megawatt turbine. So imagine if you know people are selling five megawatt turbine, and uh, then uh, you are obviously you know uh, you know you are multiplying your uh, capacity installed capacity. So because of the higher capacity, so this is uh, the number one reason why it is possible to achieve uh, ten point one gigawatt of. Uh, installed base in India. Second is uh, second reason is uh, again, you know, this uh, wind market is uh, a kind of uh, I have seen personally a cyclic uh, business few years. It is it has done really well. For example, when I joined this company, our number one business was uh, uh, coming from the wind segment. Uh, those days, Enercon, Census Lawn and Region, all these players were there. But uh, today these guys are nowhere. So Enercon India uh, had a fight with the local joint venture partner and the company was renamed as Windworld India. So today they are almost uh, defunct. And uh, Suzlan, we all know stories of Suzlan. So uh, then, uh, so yeah, so this market went through, you know, its own uh, cycle and uh, then uh, it was very diffi difficult to get finance from bank because uh, wind uh, project uh, has a long gestation period and uh, and uh, it takes uh, typically, you know, after getting the purchase order from the customer, it takes roughly, you know, one year to complete the project. So you need to invest into, you know, your raw material. You need to, uh, uh, you know, complete, uh, you know, the acquisition of the land. And uh, there are, you know, there are so many fine prints in those uh, agreements, you know, when you acquire a land and uh, somebody somewhere people are holding just part of attorney, attorney and uh, it creates uh, some kind of uh, litigation problem later. Uh, so many, you know, intricacies are there uh, in uh, wind uh, business. Yeah, so so the number one is uh, people is uh, people are upgrading uh, their capacities. Uh, so you you will see a bigger wind turbines of uh, up to five megawatts in India soon. And uh, second is all the big boys are back in India. So leading uh, this pack is uh, Siemens Gamesa. They have invested a lot and uh, they also went through their own you know, ups and downs. And uh, two years back, uh, they were uh, quite, uh, you know, White and uh, but now they have got some holding some good orders actually. Then uh, again, Enercon from Germany is back, you know, uh, in India and this time on their own uh, with the wholly owned subsidiary. So they have they are uh, uh, investing into India slowly, developing supply chain base. Then we have another big player called uh, Vestas. So Vestas has uh, invested uh, heavily into India into designing and uh, supply of uh, <coughs> wind turbine. Then uh, we saw another player actually in entering into Indian market uh, that is uh, Nordex from Germany and uh, and they have again uh, they are based out of Chennai and uh, they have pumped in uh, more than 400 500 crore in their uh, plants uh, here. So they have two or three plant and including blade manufacturing. So uh, it is uh, overall you know the picture looks uh, quite good after a long time as far as uh, wind market is concerned. So that shows that people are confident about Indian market and uh, they are also looking at uh, the supply chain, you know, exporting back from Indian facility to keep it alive, you know, if, in case if, you know, the prices are very cutthroat in India. So uh, your uh, second question was about uh, the mix of uh, renewable versus you know the traditional uh, power generation units like uh, fossil fuel and uh, hydroelectric 
So I see this uh, renewable energy will uh, contribute uh, more and more as of today, we have already seen a kind of grid parity, you know, grid parity in terms of, you know, the per unit cost is almost uh, same because uh, prices are very, very low uh, for wind. I, I remember it used to be eight rupees uh, per uh, unit a uh, few years back and now it has come to 2.3, 2.5 rupees uh, per unit. Same is the story for uh, solar also. Solar was also quite expensive and today it is uh, uh, doing quite well. In fact, in my opinion, solar should do better than wind because India is a country which has uh, 300 days of uh, sunshine. So, so I see more and more reason people, you know, going for solar uh, installed base, and uh, it's very nice to see when you, you know, land in Delhi, you see that entire airport is uh, powered by the solar panels. Actually, especially you know the taxi runway, you know, when you see on your left hand side, uh, you see. A big, uh, you know, almost uh, 800 to 1 kilometer length of all the solar power panels are powering the entire airport. Some other airports are also adopting to this uh, solar, uh, tapping into this uh, solar solar energy. So wind is uh, coming back in a, a big way because of uh, these big boys are there already in Indian market and uh, they, they have started investing. Right. So I think uh, that's nice to hear from you, uh, uh, Girishi, that you are quite optimistic that these targets set by the government are achievable and that wind energy is uh, getting a boost and there is a good development of the wind energy market in India. Uh, I think that's a positive, very positive note. Uh, um, Girishi, coming to the last uh, question uh, for our interaction today is uh, our flagship question actually. Uh, we've seen during this pandemic, Rishi, that especially the CEOs, heads of the companies, they have had to face many challenges on various fronts, be it the people, be it the business, safety of the uh, employees, safety of the customers, safety of self and family, then how to do business in such challenging times. So what we would like to hear from you, Girishi, is three tips on uh, how leaders can basically navigate their boat in these challenging period. And I'm sure these tips would be of uh, extreme importance and value also to the German CEOs and our viewers who would be watching uh, this recording, uh, Girish. Well, uh, Rajesh ji, I'm too small uh, a guy to give advice uh, or tips to, you know, there. Uh, as there are so many accomplished uh, leaders actually who are, you know, running, uh, much larger uh, successful uh, business in India. And uh, I can talk only about myself and what yes. we have done is, uh, uh, the number one, what we have done is, uh, we need to take care of our employees no matter what. And uh, even today as we speak, uh, every Monday we do rapid antigen for all of our employees in our all sales offices across India every Monday. And uh, we do this every Monday in our factory also. The reason is very simple that uh, we, though everybody is vaccinated, uh, fully vaccinated in our company, company along with uh, their family members, but you never know, guys like us, you know, we are traveling in, uh, you know, visiting so many places, we are visiting customers and uh, we work with railways. So we sometime, you know, we have to visit railway workshops, you know, so, so we are, you know, getting constantly exposed. Then our operators are also when they go home and uh, we don't know where, you know, they spend time and what is their, you know, social uh, background, uh, so many things. So first thing what we do is uh, we, we do this rapid antigen in our office, uh, despite of everybody fully vaccinated. So it gives us some kind of, you know, uh, security and safety to everyone that, okay, it's safe to come to our office and factory because Harting is taking care here. Though it is quite expensive because uh, we are using a very uh, expensive uh, kit here, but uh, we have made it mandatory. So since last uh, four months, we had been uh, doing this uh, and uh, we have... Uh, 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 no reason to stop uh, this. So the first point is giving safety and security, you know, to your employees so that they have peace of mind because uh, they would like to know that, you know, they are coming to a safe workplace. And uh, so this is number one. So, you know, if your employees uh, feel that, you know, they work for a great company, obviously their output uh, will be great. 
Second is, uh, you know, we have become a little more flexible with respect to our employees. Uh, earlier, you know, we were looking at, you know, like any other company, we had uh, this, uh, the, the kind of, you know, the biometric uh, attendance system. So today we have stopped looking at uh, biometric attendance system. You know, we don't ask people to come on uh, time and leave on time. So it's fluxy timings everywhere. So if somebody wants to work from home, so we are still okay with that. So we have given a lot of freedom to our employees. We are not insisting them to come to office every day. Third is, uh, you know, despite of all this uh, pandemic and uh, COVID and uh, economy, we all work for a business uh, and uh, the very purpose of business is uh, to, you know, to remain profitable because we are not working for charitable organizations. So we need to make money for our share, shareholders. And uh, so for that, uh, it is very important that we don't lose our focus and uh, remain committed to our uh, strategy and uh, no matter how hard it is. Uh, so this is the third point. Uh, I would like to mention what we had been doing here. So we have our goals uh, in front of us. We are very clear what we want to do. And uh, for that, whatever uh, may be the enabler we are taking care of, we are ensuring that uh, we know we are uh, getting those enablers and uh, all those uh, things uh, to make uh, us a very successful company. Because uh, when company is successful, then you know you can think of you know so many other uh, uh, things you know like you know the growth growth is always good uh, and uh, you know you can hire more people you can take care of existing people in terms of better salary increments so then it, that makes employees more happy yeah that's all i can say from my side thank you Girishi. i'll just sum it up uh, one is you mentioned about taking care of the employees uh, second the work flexibility that you have adopted in the company and uh, I think third is a very important point you mentioned is focus on strategy and goals. So I think that should uh, uh, the goals and strategies should be closely monitored and kept in mind. So uh, Girishi, uh, absolute pleasure interacting with you today and uh, thank you for being part of the VDMA CEO's thought leadership series and uh, on behalf of the German Engineering Federation as well as on my personal behalf, uh, wishing uh, you and the team in Harting India a lot of success. And thank you for all thank your you. support uh, you have been extending to VDMA in India. And we look forward to continuing this close relationship in the future also. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much uh, for uh, talking to me. And uh, so we are very proud of our association with the VDMA, which uh, is uh, not only in India, uh, with your headquarter also you know we are closely associated and it's always uh, you know nice to talk to you Rajeshji because we had been interacting since many years and we know each other and uh, we know what kind of you know good work uh, VDMA had been doing and uh, different different initiatives you know on different different technologies so it gives uh, really you know a lot of uh, you know satisfaction and pleasure to be con uh, to be associated with uh, VDMA. So thank you very much and all the best uh, to your uh, future, uh, your upcoming 10th uh, 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 Mechanical Summit in uh, Bangalore, which is uh, on uh, 8th of uh, uh, October. October. And yes, so looking, looking forward, looking to, forward what to meeting you also. Very there. Right. Same here. Same here. Thank you. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.